They're perfect on Logger Wade, and we got a harmless farmer here with us. And Logger Wade is going to give us a tour of the mill and answer any questions we got. Are you ready for this? It was actually my request to get the yak. <laughs> All right, so basically, I thought I'd give a tour of the mill of what we what we do here, or whatever, because I do get this question asked a lot on my channel. Our type of sawmill and stuff, it's based on factory lumber. It's based on uh, it's it's uh, clear face cuttings. That's what we that's what we fight for. Is clear face cuttings and a board. So you, that's what we're all graded on. That's so that starts on the stump. So when we buy timber, we're trying to buy timber that's stretching, that's stretching good, shucking limbs good, and it's growing on good soil. So when you crack them open, there's good wood on the inside too. So that's where it starts. And then you're you're cutting your trees into logs to try to give yourself the most clear face cuttings you can. And then as the tree starts getting to a lemmy. So you're trying to contain all your defects into the logs. So you got logs that are like lower grade logs, you got logs that are high grade logs, and you try to keep, you don't want to put a knot on the end of a good log if you can keep from it. So you, you see what I mean? So it mm -hmm. starts in the woods. So once you get it, and the longer there's little premium people likes the longer lumber better. But if you ain't got a tall tree, you can't make long lumber. Short trees make short lumber, tall trees make long lumber. So that's how we start in the woods. So then we come into the mill. Same we bind on the stump. Separate the species. So all them all them logs out there are separated in species and long and short. So you got eight what? footers through sixteen footers. Okay, that's what I was going to ask. And your and your longer logs usually tend to be your butt logs on a tall tree. And that's what the lumber companies. That's what they like to see. Okay. They like to see them long faces. It gives you options. So when you're buying the, the wood, you know, it's giving you your best bang for your buck, the longer stuff. Now, an elementary statement is the butt log would be the, the first log coming off the stump. Yes. And a lot of your hardwood timber, it's so different in pine, because in pine, you're, you know, they're after, uh, you know, they're after their lineal foot. You know, where it was here, we're after your clear face cuttings, which I'll get that when we get to the lumber room. But 80% of the value of a lot of trees that we have is in the bottom 20% of the tree. So your butt log is the freaking tree. Okay. And the rest of it, you're just trying to save as much as you can out of the tree. That makes sense. So your butts are important. Anyways, we're bringing in the yard, sorted for length and tally, getting our computer system. So also the job you bought and harvested, it's all recorded in log form. So you know how that job turned out. That's key. And okay. that's, that's company information. It's not, it's, you know, it's, it's inside information. Then you uh, bring it to the barker, and it rolls all around, you take your bark out. And what you're trying to do, it's a struggle because you got bumps and stuff and knots and logs. You see like a, you look up there and the, you see bumps and stuff in the logs. So you want it to barker to where you can chew them off. But then when you go to char getting in the bark, you don't want to dig in the outside of the tree because most of your money is on the outside of the wood. The closer you get to the heart, that's your defect zone. So the closer you get to the center, the more defects you get. So you want to saw as much wood as you can on the outside. Any wood that this debarker's leak is eaten is eaten directly into your profit, the big chunk of your profit. So this debarker's got shoes on it, so anything that fits in between these shoes is fair game. But then when you're skating across the log, the logs are riding on, there's these shoes are riding on, holding it out to where the teeth ain't eating into the cambium layer. What RPMs this thing turn? Uh, it's one to one, so it should be like, well, 1100, 1150. 1760. 1760, it spins and that thing travels back and forth along the log. And, uh, and the log rolls with the head. Just everybody. <laughs> and then, is this a gutter scraper or a feeder or what? Like on a, that looks like a gutter scraper out of a manure barn or something like that. Yeah, it's a similar barn cleaner. To? Yep, it's a barn, okay. it's a barn cleaner. Okay, that's cool. So uh, the barn cleaner then takes it to the, uh, it drops into a belt down there, which takes your bark out, and your bark is separated from your sawdust for selling purposes. Okay. So you can grind the bark, sell it for landscaping. That's where a lot of our bark goes in the landscaping business. And uh, so here's one, here's one he got aggressive with. And uh, damn, they did get aggressive with it. So that's a terrible example. You see how they're eating this canyon layer? Hmm. 
I don't know what happened. What happened there? What there? Sometimes you see this sort of thing. But it should be pallet wood. It's in between the push up. So it's your pallet wood anyway. That was worth. That gun there, some of that is. So that was worth. Before, at right now, it's probably 20, 25 cents a foot. So. What kind of wood is it? Just gun. It's your pallet wood. This is going for crazy. This whole log is going to be sawed. These whole logs are going to be sawed to make pallet wood. To go to okay, so like Alcoa and stuff like that. Around us, they use like cottonwood for that. They got cotton yeah, wood you use cottonwood for it too. Okay. Yep. You got them species, there's no lumber market for it to just make pallet wood. Okay. And then once that's done, then it goes over here to the head saw. And what the head saw's done is they'll put it on that carriage. That carriage runs back and forth. And these are to two 40 foot shotguns. We put this in from a mill that uh, went out of business down in Kentucky. And these are, these pipes, they're pipes, they're not rods, they're not solid rods. But these pipes and the shotgun are quarter inch wall, just schedule 40 pipes. It's chrome. And there's no piston on it. The oil comes in this chamber. Oh, just look at that hydro. Yeah. Goes. The hose comes in here and, and rushes past this tube, fills this whole tube full of oil. And then the oil fills the end of the tube and it shoves it, and there's one on the other end too, and it just, your, your, your guns just run your, and it's a real responsive setup. But look at the hoses on it and stuff. But we had to put all that in there. To make some out of control. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, your, your carry, it makes your carriage. We had a cable system, and even everybody that puts the DC drive, the fancy regenerative drives in, it makes electric. God drives in, it's kind of like a Prius car. When you're slowing down, it's making electricity. But they still don't have the response to the shotgun. But with a shotgun, you're paying both ways. You're paying money to stop and go. Okay. You know, because you're burning electricity all the time. So it's not quite as efficient, but you got superior control of your law, or your song. Because when you go from. It's all about time. So you get you load it up and get loaded on the carriage. Well, from here to that saw is dead time. So you to, and then it stop and stop in a second and ease through the saw. You see what I mean? And then yeah. race over here to do this. And race back. And you know what it's and so you can see the carriage just thundering down the tracks. And you know when he's stood up there, and he'll and he'll pick up, he'll ramp up the speed and jump to that saw blade and slow down and ease the saw. You go back and flip on the go and stuff, and just run back, and it slows down and hits the saw. So the idea to keep your, this shotgun makes a big difference on this carriage. You know, it's all about getting that wooden saw and keeping it saw. Put a bunch of here. Yeah, that's a long turn. That's uh, we put that in a few years ago, and it's just a it's just a bar turner. It's just got teeth on it. It shoots up. But we got kickers on the carriage. It's it rides on the carriage air kickers. So when he comes back, he'll flip the can and then catch it with the bar turner. You know, or unless, when you first roll low in a carry, you're picking your, oh, your opening face, what you call it. That's real important with sawing. I'm getting too technical, but. Your opening face, that's when you decide, you pick the most expensive part of the log. It's always priorities. Uh, and this, everything about what we do is priorities. So you're trying to take the most amount of money and that's what makes the decision on what you're doing for your job. So when you're opening up the log, the most important call to be made is what's your opening face. And you put your knots in the corners best you can, and you do your sweep just properly. You see what I mean when you got a bowed log and a banana and stuff like that. And in this thing, you can roll the log like parts of a... I had a tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> but no, this, uh, this, this turner can, can ease your log up and put it in slap it. So you're, you're making your first flat cut. So and you're setting your taper, it can taper and stuff, and you're setting it to where that first, what's most expensive cutting, when you go through that saw, it's set up perfect. You go through the saw and spread your defects out and stuff like that on your corners, corner your knots, what they call it, you know. But then you can flip it and go and go to saw them like crazy. Then. You're just making a square can. Now all he's trying to do on this thing, his most important job is make, uh, the right size opening face, which I ain't gonna get into all the sizes, but the right size opening face to where he can open his log up, and then uh, then he takes it down to below 18 inches for the other saw. And that top saw, the cat's catching your big logs, you know. 80% mm, of the time, that's not used, you know. It's, you know. 
Now, how big of a log can you cut through this? Mm. We can cut some monsters, but we, <laughs> we're wasteful. We call them barrel saw. Okay. You can put a monster ass log on there. If you got like the rest of the mill kind of shut down and everybody on doing other stuff, you can roll a monster log on this thing, back it way up. And then you saw face off, turn it 45 degrees. Saw face, you know, see, it ain't economical to do, but we do it. You can barrel saw it. It's like everybody say, how big a tree can you cut the cutter? You can cut them all if you want to. You know, you got, you can sit there and hew on one until you finally get it, you know what I mean? But the biggest log we probably should cut is probably a 48 to 52 incher. Okay. That's probably what the biggest we should cut. So, and you asked, what would you ask him? Has it always been 480 or have you always had three phase here? Yep. That's uh, from the get go. Was it? Like a hillbilly three phase. <laughs> We're at the end of the line, we could suck them down, you know okay, what I mean? Yeah. And then be experienced like a brownout or something, you know. We've done, and when we got the computers and stuff, then it started messing with their computers because they had to have constant, consistent, you know. Okay. Yeah, they're low voltage, but that one line that they're going off of has to stay there. And we'd suck it down to a brownout, you know, and then the computers would get off, you know. And, but finally they fixed their line and they fixed their electricity. So we're do, we do good now. But I don't like looking at it. I don't like looking at the transformers and stuff. It's ridiculous how they got it set up right now. <laughs> but it works. Now, uh, this is our file room. We do all the work on the saws in here. These are head saws, they're 56 inch in diameter. And they got these carbide inserts. This is carbide, what does the cutting. And we got a jockey grinder to touch it up, just like filing your chainsaw outside. So the head sawyer, when he's sawing dirty wood, something ain't going right, you know, he just shuts down real quick, pulls out the jockey, and meow, meow, and puts the edge right back in your tube. Now when your saw needs hammered and stuff, saws are hammered for certain diameter, for certain RPMs, and it heat and stuff in your saw, heat expands metal, so say you warm, it, you warm the eye up, then it expands the metal in the eye, well the rim's cool, well it's gonna turn into a soup bowl. And then that son of a buck's a flopping in and doing it. Do, do you do the hammer? Do you do the hammer? No, I can't. I'm not certified. I'm not qualified. Okay. Now we can do some hammering here. We got brick and ball that can hammer and stuff, but we do a lot. We send a lot of our blades out. We just keep extra blades and truck cycles through. This is your top saw. It's a 36 inch diameter, I believe. Don't hold me to that. But here's he's touching up the top saw. They touch it up back here because you know it's not used a lot. You know what I mean? And it's upside down for the, you know, so they can just do it back here. This is our band saws. They go around six foot wheels uh, out there, and I don't remember what the length of the band saw is. I'm not super duper on all the all the uh, terms on everything on the band saws. But band saw is basically you're taking metal that's in the body of the saw and re swedging shaping it to be a tooth. So the tooth on this saw blade is swedged and shape metal so it got, it's got a can that reaches under here and squishes up the metal and makes it fat there. Then you got a side piece that squeezes it down and then you put it through your profiler which actually puts the, the edge on it, you know. So that's how this is done. So you're, there's no, you're not adding anything to it, it's just the body of the saw is what you're using to cut. So it's kind of like a chainsaw in that aspect, you know, so you can, you got something you can file. It's a soft enough metal to file. Here's where they roll the head saws. And there's where you hammer the head saws. That's your anvil. And your hammer's, uh... so when you hammer a head saw, you got a round shaped hammer. And I don't see a big saw here. But you're putting, you're doing different shapes and you're putting dings in them in accordance to what you need. And then you got, uh, but you gotta do it for a dollar. And you got these uh, edges here, here you can see this. You got your edges here, I don't know if you can get the camera to, and it's got a little bit of a concave shape in it. So when you pick up the saw, so he's sitting over doing his thing, he picks up on that, picks up a saw, and he puts his edge, and he goes all the way around the saw and picks out spots that he's going to hammer on. He marks them with a, uh, this doodad, you know, and he marks all the spots he's going to hammer. And he just spins that saw around on his ball bearings and hammers in them spots and then of course rechecks it and all that mess. When you get done, you gotta put the tire line back in the saw, which is a spot around the ring where it's got the uh, the metals expanded and it gets crimped through these rollers and that's where he sets his RPM and all that mess on. I don't understand a lot of it, that's all I know. 
Talking. But he does all of them, right? All the big, all of them, even the yes, big Yes, but we, a lot of times we'll send them off too. Okay. It's, it just depends. Especially if they get real bad, you have to send them to the professionals to get it fixed. And then you hear the, you hear the, uh, all the old saw fathers and stuff talking about rolling a saw out. You know what I mean? Well, how do you roll it out? And said, well, open the door and roll it right outside. You know, through all that, it's, doing, it's got a program in it that does CNC. And we're changing our profile to that profile. We ran this, see how fat them teeth are, how girthy them are? This is the profile we ran here. This is the profile we ran for years and years and years. Look how sissified them teeth back are. See how thin this metal is? And then go in the one over there. See how girthy it is. See how much fat that's got? That tooth got? See how much more metal there is in this tooth up here? It's got a lot more meat behind it. So, but it's just a program, it's a preset program. So you put one of your old bands up there and you will uh, go to one program and put the new style up there and go to you hit another program and it, it just the CNC takes care of that mess. So, uh, and no, we're not sharp enough to. They set up the program and we plug them in and it, they take care of us on that. We got it. it uh, Simon's a player. Uh, yeah, no, we're not Simon's. Olsen. I think it's Olsen. I, I can't give a lot of names. It's still hard to do. This ain't my stomping ground. I, I've helped a few times. Yeah, I know enough just to be dangerous. Okay. But if there's a band like really screwed up, I can't fix it. I like, but like to run the mill everyday bands, I can, they taught me how to bench a little bit and stuff. but. These guys are real good at what they do. I mean, they're real, and they're checking the band the same way. It goes on here, and they're checking for your back, your tension. Uh, basically, you take a band and you roll it in the center of that band. Look at it across here. I'll just keep it like this. So, the center of this band, you're gonna put a hump in that thing. So, the outsides of the band is what they call your tire lines. The tire lines, I'm gonna have to pull something. But it's the tightest spot. You got a bubble in the center. And then what you do is you use that roller up there and you pull out of one or the other to get the band to where it's right for a certain RP, you know, it's right for doing its thing. It's got enough uh, back and stuff like that to accomplish its goal, which is it's the same gauge. So it's that same curved gauge. So when they're doing their thing, they'll pick it up. Now check it to see if they got enough like all money in the bank. See if you got enough, you know that band's got enough uh, tension in it to where they can then start working on tire lines. And your tire lines gotta be moved. Your back is the tightest part, or your your back is tighter, but your front's the tightest part of the band. So most of your strength is right here. Most of your strength in your band is in this section right here that's doing the work. But what's back here is keeping it on the wheels and keeping it uh, keeping it uh, uh, from deviating. See what I mean? It's just your, but your your, and that's all I know about that. I can't really go any farther because I don't really know. But they call that putting money in the bank, and then you take it out and you move it. So you got to move every time you move your tire lines out or out, you're taking it out of the center. So then you got to re-roll the center and check with the gauge to put money back in the bank so you can take it out on the sides. That's a simple. Bull Way that I know, and I could do like new bands and just touch them up. But once the band gets older, they get more problematic. They get cracks in the gullets. They get back cracks. You put too much back in your band. You can put a lot of back in your band and run it and shove the wood through it. You know, but then you start breaking the back and stuff. And then they got to weld it. They got they can weld it here. They got a TIG. Yeah, I see some pieces underneath here. Well, they'll, they'll break teeth off, and well, these is up. They'll break teeth off, and then they'll cut teeth out. And then weld teeth in the band. Then you right. go over the profiler and you cut it back down. So you, you and there's welded teeth. You get an old feeble band, you start getting a bunch of welded teeth on the stuff. This ain't feeble yet. You get some of them, you usually end up over in this area. You'll see burn spots on them and stuff. The bands ain't hundred bucks. 
And you can run it from, we start out 11 inches and we run it, if you, if you don't have a red, we run down closer to nine inches. And then there's one. There's a back track. Now this band, the band's probably getting older. If you measure across the face of it, it's probably getting to be older and the male's getting stretched out. And then they'll weld it up and they start working the metal. And that affects the whole area of the band. And you also got a, uh, your back gauge where you're checking your back. This band, if you roll it all the way out, it actually has a little arc to it. You know what I mean? And they got a long straight head. And all that shit affects it. You know how welding is. But you weld on something, it contracts and pulls. It just, mm -hmm. I like it has to be balanced so it makes stuff, sorry. Has to be balanced, so you know I got to put it all back in order after they do so that mess. And they did. And then sometimes I've seen them take a hammer to it over there and be, oh no, with a hammer, God, you're doing a head saw to get their stretch back. <laughs> but it's cool to watch somebody follow and knows this. Here's Sweat and Shaper. This is your, this is your Shaper. Turn your switch, and it's just a cam. See this cam is low, so it box down. You put it up here on the, on the. Profiler and this rig, you, you uh, when you pull back on it, it clamps and then this cylinder, the cylinder come out against this preset stop of how much you want it to switch it, you know, and it just rolls more metal up. And as you roll more metal up, then it gets fat on the top and you got to squish it back to it, and it's your shaper. And we got them preset to different, different switches. Here's the big one. And here's the small one. So when you first start out on a band, uh, when you first really pull yourself up a lot of metal to work with, you start with the big one, and then you, then you end up with the small one towards the end of when you're fine tuning. So, so as you, you know, you're doing, you work it more your metal first, and then you kind of ease it down towards the end of fine tuning. And, uh, and this is your auto bench. It does 90% of the work on your normal bands of this guy, of this bench and stuff. So you put it on here, and it goes through and it runs the band around, it reads it and stuff, and it cramps it in certain areas to get your band really close. It ain't perfect, but it gets it really close. It does 80 some odd percent of the work, maybe. And then you pull it over here to do your last little bit. I don't think, I don't know this, and you have to ask the follower, but I don't think you ever take it off this and go straight to your profile. You always gotta go over here and touch it. Make sure it's right. You're checking for bent teeth, you're checking for, well we check for bent teeth a lot, Especially in this profile we ran for years. See how limber and agile, you know how, ain't enough meat here. It needs to be metal back here. So when okay. you smack on that tooth, see, it ain't, and, and with these bands, it, you're always tweaking on the teeth. We do, they use this up. Uh, and that's what we do. They use way too many years. Well, I don't know where it's at. There. <laughs> Look at that. Look, they've had to tape it and stuff. I mean, they've used this son of a buck to, Straighten teeth for so okay. <laughs> and then you're checking your you're checking your teeth with this, you know, for side for so you put it on the body, you know. You gotta have it on something flat where you're checking, you know, you're checking for your bent teeth. I'm doing it wrong. But see they're going through there checking all that stuff. And then they're and they're constantly they're constantly getting bent teeth with this, with this profile. And then that's your wrench that you but I mean, these are tools you should hardly use, is what our point is. And we're wearing them out. <laughs> Have been for okay, years. Okay, now, why? Because, because we're running the wrong profile, and we just uh, say it's sandy. It's not being sandy, we're saying, no, we're going to different results. Okay. That's what we do. Okay. It's sandy. So, Derek's cracked the code on it, and he's got it. He's, and it's like a, it's like a daggone come to Jesus moment for us. Oh, this is really going to change the way. And they got, they got where they're sawing. We can outsaw we can grain. I'll get into that here next. Let's just get into that next. But the the actual craftsmanship that these guys put into this and, and that experience that they have is just it's amazing. I tried to come back here and help when Derek was sick and stuff. And I'd do it. But I told Derek how I'd do it. As soon as I gotta be too much trouble, I'd roll them out. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make this real quick. It's a it's a uh, it's a uh, clearman carriage, kind of a big deal for the the hillbilly 
and up saw millers. Like the super duper fancy big time hoppy boppy. Sometimes they do like a different company carriage. Like they got like a tiger cat of the carriages, Corley and stuff like that. But this is a clear one. This is just a good all around carriage. It's a linear positioner carriage and it's set up onto a computer program. So it, it's got rods in there that position, that knows, so the computer knows where your head blocks are. See what I mean? So as your, you know, or your, your knee, you know what I'm saying, where your knees push out. So this thing can taper, it can do all, so however your log's built, this carriage on the go in a hurry can. So like if one end, so like if one end's thicker than the other, it knows yeah. this. Yeah, you, know, you, you put it on there and you bump it. We don't have a scanner, which we should have a scanner, but we don't. But uh, you can bump it in position, and then it's saying when you hit, when you lock it in, I, I don't know, I can't solve. But when you lock it in, from what I know, when you lock it in, it's locked in. So when you roll it around, you know, and hit your next face, it knows where it's at, and you hit a bump, it bumps it out uh, an inch and an eighth. Oh, okay. For your next, automatically, all that stuff happens automatically. And it stays tapered, so if you're sawing a certain taper, you can take boards off of it, and that uh, holds that taper and brings it out. So if your logs say, it's, high, it's just exaggerated, so if your logs like this, it knows that when it comes out, it's coming out even as it as tape. You see what okay. Man, okay. all he's doing, so the head saw, he's making his grade decisions, and he's making the opening face. So when you make an opening face, you basically decide how that log's gonna be sawed as a profile. He's making a square where it'll sit on a row case. That's what we got going on here. So then he kicks it off on this cant dump, and it'll raise up, and then slide them towards oh boy here. And this is a merry-go-round resaw. And the, what the design of this is, is a real good design. It's designed to get your uh, production, but not have to sacrifice quality. So it's basically, it keeps your cans going through like this. And they'll have this table full, the in feet side full, the out feet side full. They'll have, that's your concentration deck over there. They'll have that deck full. If they, if they need it, you know, whatever, it, however they're sawing. And this, this operator, he can bring a can out, and you're always sawing for your money. Everything you do in here is for your, your uh, clear face. So he'll pull it out, and he'll roll that can around on these cradle chains, and he'll pick the what he figures is the most expensive face of that can. As simple as that. What's the most expensive face? Puts it towards the fence, and that's the face you cut on. So every time, and then there's a guy on the bottom end that he's your great, he's your flipper. So this guy can focus more on keeping it butt to butt to that fence and give him time to get its stuff lined up. So you're bored, 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 bored going through this thing. And then that guy down there, he's making your, he's rolling around and picking your most expensive face to cut. And then once it gets down to, depending on what species it is, once it gets down to where it's too cheap of wood, to make boards out of, and we're going to pallet stock, we're going to flitch it. He moves it out on that concentration deck, and you're stacking your hearts out there. And then when you get so many of them built up, they'll do a run out. They'll bring them all in, and then he'll set his fence to a real thick, thick stock for your heartwood, and just crank them through. Whereas like these here, once they get squared and get the wing off of them, they'll be flitches straight through, which is your thick stock. Goes down pallet room for later. So then the person that runs this saw sits in that booth. So you're taking this guy's job, and he's more of a gag on, he's just operating this rig. He can see it all, and he can operate it. He's got a camera on the back side, back here on this monitor, where he can see him, and let you know. Oops, sorry. So he's sitting here, and let me let the screen cycle. I like the uh, central AC. Yeah, that's how we roll. Yeah. Saw motor style. It's high tech, man. <laughs> yeah. So anyways, he's sitting here and he's got a camera and he can see the backside there. He can see his, con his, his belts outside the building so he knows he's got to stop up. And this here is down the lumber room. So he knows that the guy's down there okay. He knows he's got a problem down here where he can't see behind his blind spot. And he knows he's got any stop ups on the outfeed conveyors on the outside of the mill. So he's sitting here, he's a big traffic cop, so what this old boy's doing. He's pretty trained, pretty well trained. These guys, there's very few people that can do this on our, on the payroll. I can't. I, I've done it a little bit, but I can't do it. But these guys, and they're and he brings the, he brings his stuff in from the head saw, and he picks the most expensive face, makes a set, sends it through. And the stuff of Wayne on it's gotta go over to Edger. And he's appealing them off and they're going to the edger, going to the edger, going to the edger, you know, until he gets to where it's no Wayne left on it. 
uh, up to a certain less than 50 percent that's long but anyways when he gets where there's no more weight on it then he'll drop the gate back here and he's just sending boards straight through so they start out like these all you're looking at is going to go to edger go to edger go to edger and that's what's going to the edger right there the edger is the uh, gray machine up there and then the, the edger man he takes the weight off of it to whatever percent of the board depending on what we're selling to and stuff how much weight he's took off basically and your most expensive woods on the outside so your most expensive wood tends to be boards that are edged. See what I mean? Because mm -hmm. then when, by the time you get into the log farther, after you got boards that are... And you get some on big logs, big hardy logs like a poplar out there, that you're doing face boards, which is the highest grade of board. Face boards right up without edging them or nothing. But a lot of your expensive boards go through an edger. And an edger is a pretty... Every piece is an important part of the, the, of the... You know, every piece is important when you're going through this. Every job is. But, you know, so the pressure's always on to, you know, how much wood do we save? And that guy's always down there, how, where's the expensive face I put to the fence? You know, and this guy, he's making sure nobody gets hurt. He's making sure the flow goes smooth. He ain't tearing up parts and people, you know. And uh, he's basically a big traffic cop. So this. And this guy's a busy guy. He's in here, his, his focus is, there's times he'll make a screw up in the lumber room that he can clearly see two inches from his head on his camera because he's so focused on keeping the mess out. <laughs> you know, it's just, it's okay. just. Mentally demanding all the time. That job is. And then that's where your your band unit is. So like in every assembly line type applicant, every okay, so this is a in, in this production line, this is the thing that where you monitor your your productivity, your flow and everything is measured from right here. And this is and it, and it, and it can the operation. Yeah. But, but, but it can get set up in such a way where the way the lumber room is now, which is, it's real important. It's real primitive, but it's a real important area. But it can outrun it. We can't receive the lumber and do a good job of grading it as quick as what it can put it out. Which is where you want to be. You don't want to be where you got to run into the stoppers all the time. Get what you need. And everything's run on uh, photo cells. So these jump in, they all jump automatically. There's a set of photo cells down here. So when the board ends get there, these chains jump. They're, they're neat cleaned off, the hives need cleaned off, but let's see. And then the boards get there, and then, and then in the eyes, the way the eyes see the break in the eyes there in the center, so it knows the board to the edge or can't to this side. So you're that's how it, they jump up and they got dropped before the next one comes. So jump up, sweep, drop. Jump up, sweep, drop. And it's automatic. And uh, that's what they call them sweep chains, because you sweep the deck off of it, you know. But, and then there's a guy that sits there to make sure the, he's a traffic cop, basically. And he's got to watch his fingers. And then the, this old boy over here, he's the grade. This is the turning station, we call it. And this is where the grade is done. Oh, these guys did a hell of a job with the capital project. But he's, he's got all everything over here he needs. And he's bringing them in, he's dealing a cant, he picks it up, and rolls around, he's putting his money over here. So the money's always going to this side of the cant because when it goes down, it goes through, it's going through the fence. So he's picking for his money and dropping it. Picking for his money and dropping it. Then it gets to where, depending on what species it is, it gets real complex. It's more than I need to talk in this video. But and he'll make a decision and say, all right, we're going to power stock it now, we're going to flitch it. And he pulls it out there on this deck and it sets away from the flitch. If you get a congestion and problems, you can pull stuff over to the side. So it's about options, about keeping your options. So you got enough options to keep the flow going smooth through this thing. And these guys are freaking good at it. They are good at it. They can make the life in a lumber room a living hell because they know what they're doing so good. You know what I mean? Yeah. But the last thing you want is the life in a lumber room to be a living hell. Anytime you make it a living, anytime this, it starts into us and them thing. That's terrible for a company. Us and them, terrible. They'll get into it, these guys will get into it, and they crack heads, and then the company make, pays the bill. See what I mean? Mm -hmm. So you try to work your, you try to do what you can to keep everybody working together on the same page. And this is an edge, see, that's where this guy stands. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, this is the edger, and it's, and it's the, it's got lights up there, and he moves it side to side, and you like, Technically, you're allowed on a face board, which a lot of these boards are face boards that are wanging, except for the low-grade logs at the top of the tree. Uh, 
And you do, every bit of wane you take off the side of the board, you know what wane is, that's where the round the edge of the board's round. Uh, <clears throat> every little bit you're taking out of the width of that board, which is taking away from your cuttings, it's giving you less option. You don't want to take your width out. But there's only a certain amount which you're allowed to wane in a face, a face board, which we should, unless they push that, we should have them down there. So the rules is 50% length of the board in wane. Well, you get people that wants it down to more like 20% or 25%. So you're always edging. Everything's done to the company you're selling it to. So every time they set up on a species, there's a hole. All right, these guys are taking this. The upper's going here, the one and two's going here, one's going here, one and two's going here, you know, blah, blah. And here's the prices they're paying, here's what they're doing, and that tells you, and there's sort of charts made of what everybody's paying and stuff, so how you can queue on a board. So I'm getting ready to show you. You know, this is where all the mill work's done, but down there, that's where all the money can be rekindled. And, and it's all based, so everybody's got to be on board. Everybody's got to know where it's going, knows how the, and it's all based off markets too. A company today, when, uh, when say, if Red Oak's up, which ain't been a long time, but say Red Oak's up, for example, just that, they'll let a lot of slide when Red Oak's up. Red Oak's down, ew. you gotta go back to planting by the nitty gritty, and maybe then some. Or they'll start claiming on you. And a claim is when they don't agree with your grade. So they buck you on the price of lumber on a certain percent of the load because they didn't agree with your grade. See what I mean? Yeah. And here's your chipper. Here's where all your waste goes. And everything in the mill takes its waste. So you got three dimensions, length, width, and height. So as you do your three dimensions, you know, you get, as you trim it off, you end up with the waste from all three dimensions. And all the waste ends up down here. And this conveyor right up here is from the lumber room. It's where their waste ends up up here, which we'll get that in a minute. Here's your length. This is your double end trim. As your boards come through, there's photo sales that's telling the length of the boards. And this guy also has, if he's quick enough, which they come through here at a rate of speed, it's hard for this guy to keep up. But say you get a board, you know, you do a butt log, it happens a lot on, how can we a tapered board? So the end of your board, you got a good board here, it's been edged, so your edges are good, but you get the end of the board and it tapers off to a bunch of trash because of the way that the log works. Well, he can drop two saws instead of dropping one, you know, and cut that off. He's catching him. Or you get a doughy end, so you get a butt that's got dough on it. Or a top log that gets dough on it. He can drop a saw. So the photo sales So these saws are up, and then he, they're, I mean, they're down, they're right down, down yeah. they're up, and then he can. As it goes through, it can do its own thing where it senses, you got a board that's 10 foot and eight inches for some reason. It'll say, all right, this is a 10 foot, and it'll drop the saw down to be, it'll make it 10 foot, four inches. You got four inches of overcut. So it'll drop it down, make it 10 foot. But say you turn around and you say, all right, here's two foot of trash, and you know that 10 footer, well, we're gonna make it an eight foot. And he'll override a computer, drop an eight foot saw down. But it's lugs, uh, oh, I don't know how many seconds, I ain't gonna go through. Oh, we ain't got air on anyways. I can't run the feeder. Mm -hmm. But he's, he's, them lugs, he's got a, Constantly, you know, he's constantly, the next lug's coming up. So you gotta stop the unit, and then this starts backing up, you know. Uh, the, the system works good enough for our size that a lot of the flow ends up in the chaos if you ain't, if every operator ain't doing good and controlling his, his part of the world. So now, the mill work's done. We've made our first initial stab at length, width, and height. You got your three dimensions, and it's coming down here. And as it gets down here, this is where we put, and it's the most primitive looking room on the place. But there is a lot of thinking and trimming and work to try to upgrade your boards. Because now you got, you got what the board gave you, you got what the guys up top gave you. And these guys are making decisions on, and they done pushed out, so there's nothing sitting in here to look at. We had to push out on, push out the white oak here. But anyways, this guy is taking the boards and he's making the grades. And what the grades are designed on is clear face cuttings. A cutting ain't the board. The clear the, the cuttings are a percentage of that board's face. 
So say you got a 14 foot board and 83% of that's clear, that's your highest grade, that's a one face. 66 and two thirds is clear, that's a, that, or that's a, yeah, that's a one common. And then 50% two common, 33% is a three common. And that ain't all the, that ain't all there is to it. There's certain dimensions it's got to fall under. Uh, it's, it's a long drawn out process. But basically, you got 83, 66, 50, and 33. That's your grades. And if it can't make any of that, it's cold. See what I mean? Mm -hmm. But you can also take wide boards. When you get wide boards, when you get these big wide boards and these big long boards, there's a lot of units, what we call it. And that's the cutting units in a board, which is a one inch strip by 12 inches long. You can take that board, manipulate that board, sometimes cut it in half in length. Make two eight footers out of a 16 footer. One eight footer be a high grade. Next eight footer be a low grade. So okay. your wood is still there. All your units is there, but now you've took it, busted it up, and part of that board went in this pack, part of that board went in another pack. You can also do that little trick in length. You can rip it. That's your rip saw. That's your an old antique son of a bucking saw that aren't just keep every day. But you can take a wide board that end up with some knots on one side. Say you got a board that's 10 inches wide, but one side of the board has a couple knots on it. The other side of the board is completely clear. You can get it all the way down to where your minimum is three inches. So you can do like a seven inches of face lumber and go all the way down to three inches of common lumber. So you take that board and you do a little whip stitch and next thing you know, you got an upgraded board, you still got all your units. See what I mean? So it gets freaking complex. And another, another thing to it is, is if you're a dry kiln company, you always catch it on the back side of the dry kiln. We ain't got dry kilns. So when we sell a green board, it's gotta be finished. Now in a dry, like a big company, they'll do, they'll actually take it, they'll grade it in a hurry, the green coming off the mill, and they'll make their stacks, they'll put it through a dry kiln, <laughs> comes out of the dry kiln, they regrade it, and they get a net second chance at it. And then they'll, they'll do, do an S2S, that's where you surface two sides, that's how you're selling finished lumber, is S2S. So they'll surface for two sides through a planer, plane this side, plane that side, and grade it a third time. And get it. We don't have that opportunity. We're coming straight off the mill, we're coming off the mill hot, and everybody's got to make their and make it come together and get your upgrades. That's how it's it, amazing. You know what I mean? So it's a, this place is a hectic place. And it's, it makes me feel awful that I've not figured out how to, I'm starting to figure things out on how I can make life easier on these guys down here. These guys have a rough, have a rough. They got to have. How the, many people work in here? Uh, it varies. You got at least two, we try to keep two lumber graders going. You got a guy doing upgrades. And it, most of the time, he's he knows the grades. He can't grade, but he's uh, making upgrades. So we got three guys that's capable of grading, sitting here doing their thing, and doing the rips, and doing the chops. The, the, where you do your cutoffs, there's your cutoff cart. So you got cut off. See cut off. So you got stuff on the end. Of, here you go, stuff on the end. This was a this was a face board. This is unsound wood. Rock pits shaking Wayne. That there is Wayne. But actually, it was debarker mess. I don't know what is going on with debarker. That was embarrassing. But here's another one. This was a face board, and the last, the, the end of the board had too much weight on it. It's so too narrow of a board to do any ripping because you knock, you got to be a certain width to be your high grade, also. Cut that off. And then you got, you know, say, uh, died. So, anyways, that's, got a good thing going. that's, that's what you're doing. And it's the small cutoffs. You know, and there's, I ain't gonna get in all the rules. And I ain't bull messing my way through it. I do know the rules, but there's a lot of rules. But you get, unsound wood is not allowed in clear face cuttings. It's rock pits, shake and wane. Pits, the center piece cord on your tree. It's the very center of your tree. It's called pit. Shake, <clears throat> that's shake. So that's what you see when there's a tree laying on the ground and it's like got cracks in the butt of Yes, that's, that's shake. shake. So that's shake. Of course, we all know what rod is. 
that's a little piece of rot. Okay. And it gets down like that. You're grading for that stuff. It's hard to see it in time. I mean, it's ridiculous. It takes a... They say, like, to properly grade, you, you can grade, a human can grade, like, to grade right with the rules, about 14,000 feet a day. And we're sawing 30s and 40s. Really? See what I mean? So it's... And there's days, in poplar days, you'll crack 50. You know, so... Just depends on what the species is. So it's hard to do it and keep and keep it doing it right. But that that's that's rock piss shaking wings. So you gotta cut that out of your clear face cuttings. Here you go, here's some bird pecking stuff. Huh? Wormholes. You know, that's unsound wood too. You know, they're cutting off all your unsound wood. Bird peck on the end of that. Now what's bird peck? Woodpeckers after okay. bud. And then here's your here's your where a low grade goes. This is where all your, and that's pit. Here's the pit. Here's your pit center. That's a crooked ass tree too. So this is the very center of the tree. And look at all the bird peck. That's your pit center. How do bird peck get clear in there when it's, oh, it almost looks like bugs almost. Yeah, it could be like a born bug. We call it bird peck. But it's, okay, it's okay, bird. that's just the term. Okay. Yeah, that's the term you use. So what do you do with this? Is this okay. sold also then as something? Or? Yep. Okay. So this all comes in here, and this is, uh, well, this is your regular power stop stuff. This is your regular, this is gun. What it looks like to me. These are the fixture boards you're talking about right now. That's your flitches, yep. Yeah. Okay. And there's salt maple here. This is salt maple. See, you remember salt maple? See, if, you, if you're like me and you grow up around wood, you start really falling in love with wood. It's just hard not to. And that ain't where the money's at. Because money's in the production, getting out, you know, but you fall in love with it. Worm and salt maple. And you get trees that's just littered with it. Really? And you're sitting there selling it for a cheap price. And you're like, why? I would love this in my house. You know what I mean? You know, the exotic woods, I fall in love with the exotic stuff. Because I, yeah, I see running the mill all day long. And that's what you're going for, is running the mill. That's what sells money. There's one. Here's a good example. See them down there, look at all that character down there. Now you, you can dry it and clean it up and get it surfaced, it really pops. You know, what's the, like all this? Is this the same thing? Yep, now that is, uh, what you're seeing here is uh, gonna be a mineral. Okay, that's just what you were talking yep. about last time. As a tree stresses out and, gets, and is given up, it fills up with mineral and it starts in the hardwood and grows. And what, what happens is you come back five years later and that'd be rock. Really? Starts out mineral and ends up rot. But if you catch a tree right at the mineral stage, bring it in, mill it, and get it dried and surfaced, you can have some crazy looking furniture. And it still sounds solid wood. It's good wood until it rots, you know. But anyway, so then you got, now you got your dimensions here and it's coming to the pallet room. And you got to go through the milling process, length, width, and height, you know. So you're right back to that. This does, you just rip it in the beginning, is what we do. And then it goes to computerized chop saw, then uh, and it's a uh, it's an optimizing chop saw. So as when you start in this room, you know I was talking about the the center of the chaos. Mm -hmm. It's at the chop saw because everything else is linear. The wood is moving in a flow through the room, but when you stop it and chop it, you're stopping the flow everywhere to make that cut. So what we got is a is a saw that runs the jog speed on us like. 600, it can ramp up to 600 feet a minute. It's more running like 300 probably. So that board goes in there 300 feet a minute, just a popping right there. And, it, and as that computer sees it, it goes into its window. That fence, the reason that for the length of the fence is a computer to make its cut decisions. So it comes in there and it's, and it's cutting money cuts. It's cutting based off of what the board, what they pay. So it's optimizing your utilization. Then this here's your height. It's done in the end. And you got four headed wood mozzers and then a two headed baker. And then here's all the sizes. That's your crating sizes. So in here you got, so it goes through its milling process just like up above in the big mill. It goes through its milling process and it comes out down here. And then you got a uh, inspection area. So this is an inspection area and this guy's in an inspection. And when he don't, some don't pass the grade, he sets it on that thing. If he's got something that needs re-ripped, he'll set up the cart and he got pushed up over here. 
and he's a sort and it's just your sorter man. He's doing that, and then these guys you got all these stack. You got uh, like three to four guys stacking here. This here they call it. We grade for clear case, clear face cuttings, and here this is about yield. So there you're trying to make clear face cutting. Here you're trying to utilize. How do I get put that board through the room and keep as much of that footage as I can? As simple as that. I guess that's about it. And here's the tally line. This is where Molly works. Okay, so this, Molly does a lot of her noodling around. So she's making loads of lumber. And here's your stencils. Through this tray board, we have changed a lot of companies. But there, there's, it's a struggle. And the problem is, you know damn good well, if you're selling to a company you've sold to for years, you got clout. Mm -hmm. Well, when this all happens and everybody's scrapping, you know what I mean? Everybody's fighting for every little piece of you're going to somebody as a beggar. <laughs> Would you take my stuff, please? You know, <laughs> you know what I mean? So you gotta earn your, you know, you have no clout, you have no nothing. And we got some companies that got financially unsound that we've been depending on forever. So here we are, boo down the street. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and you're finning, you're running around trying to scurry up stuff. We found some good stuff. We got a good reputation for Greg. We keep that in sawmill wood. And that reputation has helped us a bunch. And there's a lot of sawmillers out there right now that ain't got that reputation. They can't hardly sell anything. Right now. Yeah. So we're, we're thankful for that, you know. Because right now is a thin end of the ranks. What we're going through right now is a good thin end of the ranks. But we're somehow figuring it out. So I guess that's about it. Thanks everybody. <laughs> for letting me yeah, yeah. catch you for hours. We should do the uh, typical Wade mic drop. We're out. <laughs> no, no, it's just like this. <laughs> <laughs> so, Game over. <laughs>